Well, let's talk a bit more, shall we, about Ukraine's possible EU membership. We're joined now by Philip Ingram, the former British military intelligence colonel and NATO planner, to give us his analysis on the latest in Ukraine. So, should we start off by talking about that bid for EU membership? Um, here's a um, you know, map of, uh, you can see uh, the EU there, uh, Ukraine all the way there uh, over in the east. It feels almost as if the war has pushed it to look a bit more westwards. It is. It's significant from a strategic perspective because we were hearing um, rumblings from Schultz of Germany and Macron of France in not necessarily supporting uh, the military actions and what was going on inside Ukraine and potentially suggesting solutions uh, where Ukraine would have to trade some territory. That has been put to bed now completely. And therefore, from a strategic perspective, Vladimir Putin knows that Europe is completely behind Ukraine and that will be worrying him. From an operational perspective, you know, getting into the ground, that will help embolden the Ukrainian military, the, the Ukrainian politicians and their staff. And then from a tactical perspective, it's not really going to affect things um, on, on the short term, but it does give that extra bit of emboldenment to the, to the troops that are fighting hard. And you, don't, you can't underestimate how important it is to get that, that psychology behind uh, what it is that they're doing, and therefore it'll help them fight um, even harder. That's interesting, particularly at a time when it feels like so many of those troops are really having to dig in yeah. uh, as and, the battle intensifies. And, and the most important factor, we, we talk about kit all the time, we talk about weapons, they're, they're very important, but the most important factor when it comes to this guttural warfare, and it is guttural, is the human factor. Uh, let's look at the map again, uh, shall we? Because it does feel as if uh, Russia is continuing to push in uh, certain areas, uh, doesn't it? Uh, really uh, over in the east. I mean, you can see all this kind of red uh, uh, intensifying uh, on the borders with Russia. How is the current situation going? It is. Russia's main effort is in through Severodonetsk. They're trying to close um, this particular pocket here, um, encircle the Ukrainian defenders that are in there, um, and try to capture the rest of uh, the disputed Donbass region. If they manage to do that, they will probably try and sue for peace. However, the secondary Russian effort is to try and stop up in the northeast around Kharkiv, uh, the uh, Ukrainian uh, attacks there and their suggestions are right up to the Russian border. Uh, and then we're seeing indications of successes down in Kherson in the, in the southwest where the Ukrainians are pushing forward uh, and the, the Russians are trying to defend that. And of course, we've got the Black Sea. You know, there's reports today of a Russian tugboat um, that has just been um, sunk around Snake Island. It was more than just a tugboat, it was also a resupply vessel that's there. Uh, and that was the first reported use of harpoon anti-ship missiles that have been supplied by the West. Um, so there, there are real effects happening on the ground. I just want to um, talk a little bit about the kind of end goals uh, of this and, and, and uh, the way out, if you like. I mean, we're not talking about Kyiv anymore. That's not even marked on the map. Uh, and, and if you remember the early days of the war, you know, it felt like we could be in a situation where it, it would have fallen. Uh, now it feels, look, uh, you can see the fighting really intensifying in, in the south, you know, kind of Mariupol obviously falling, and then in the uh, Donbass region as well. Mm -hmm. Can you see a, a situation where Russia tries to purely take the Donbass, or, or do you think that actually no territory at all uh, is really up for grabs in this war? Well, I think Russia is trying hard to take the Donbass. They've, they've said that. They lost Kiev. They lost up around Kharkiv and what they were doing in the northeast. So they've lost two major battles so far. As um, Admiral Sir Tony Radkin said today, the chief of uh, uh, the, the chief of defence staff in the UK military, the Russians have lost strategically. You know, they're, they're growing the EU and they're growing NATO and they're bringing greater resolve together. Tactically, if they can get the Donbass region, Putin will see that as some form of success. However, the resolve we got out of the uh, European leaders' visits yesterday saying that they didn't see Russia's ability to hold any Ukrainian territory as being key. Uh, and I think Pre President Zelensky will have um, convinced them of that. That's, that's the key bit here. Significant. That's very significant indeed. It does feel significant. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on and, and telling us you. You know, a bit of, of what is really going on uh, in Ukraine, all important stories, so thank you so mm. much.